you know, you all know how to put a lot of pressure on a woman. I think when I was at the bank where somebody said to me, I think it was Pastor Evans, I know you're going to pull it tomorrow. I said, well, don't pull it. <laughs> and then when I walk in the church, they say, I know you got some fire. And I'm like, fire? <laughs> OK. But actually, I just came here to celebrate Amen. and to encourage, to celebrate 25 years of ministry and to encourage you to continue to move in ministry. Amen. You know, when you first started, I think I was here when you were over in the other building. Yeah. And uh, God gave me an opportunity to come really, um, to really come preach. I think maybe in the first, the first year. It probably was in December, because I remember Lake Michigan was frozen over, and I was just amazed. How could a whole lake freeze? But anyway. <clears throat> because I'm from Miami, right? <laughs> but one thing God really put in my spirit, he said that this ministry, Zoe Outreach Ministry, is revolutionary. Yeah. It's a revolutionary ministry. Right. You, know, I, you know, like he said, he told my business, yeah, I've been preaching and been in ministry for over 40 years, and I tell you, I've seen a lot of church stuff. Well. I've seen a lot of church programs. Uh -huh. I've seen a lot of church politics. Uh -huh. And it's not all about the kingdom, I tell you, it's not. Sometimes people see it like social clubs, you know, like, like you're AKA or Omega. Well, you know, I belong to whatever. But you know what? What's revolutionary about this ministry? And I think you, you said it in your theme, and you kind of got me hooked into your theme this year. You said, um, you have fed us with truth. You have fed us with truth, and you've done it for 25 years. You know, 25 years could be a lifetime. You know, and, and then when I think about it, then you use your theme scripture. You know, I'm not going to have you, I'm just going to walk through some things this morning. And uh, I'm going to be all kind of in different places, okay? But your theme scripture says from Jeremiah 3.15, and I will give you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. I mean, that's, that's profound in itself. Because even when this scripture was written in Jeremiah, he was, God was having Jeremiah speak to a rebellious people, speak to Israel, the northern kingdom, who had been taken captive. And then he told them, you know what, Judah is just as bad. But he said, but you know what, out of them, I'm going to take a remnant of people a remnant of people who are, who are willing to reveal who I am to the world. Right. Because God had given his kingdom to Israel to reveal to the world who he was and who he is and what he wanted to be to humanity. But then he says, you know what, but out of them, even though I want them to return to me and even though they're going to repent, he said, you know what, I'm going to take a remnant of people, just a small group of people. And you know what, I'm going to give them shepherds after my own heart. I'm going to give them shepherds and leaders who are going to lead my people and feed my people what I want them to be fed so they can become like me, so they can represent me in the earth realm. So when I think about... <clears throat> And I say it's revolutionary. When I, the kingdom message is revolutionary. Right, yeah. Because what, what's happening is this. You know, because when you think about it, what is truth? Everybody wants to say, I got my own truth. This is what I believe is truth. You know, they make up facts. Truth is supposed to be based on reality and actuality, right? Yeah, yeah. But when we live in a world that's darkened by the enemy, if you look around yourself, even systems of government, it's darkened. Uh -huh. That's not the reality of God. Uh -huh. That's not what God wanted uh -huh. in the earth realm. It's, it's just not. So when you have pastors who teach you and emphasize to you truth, he said, he's fed you truth for 25 years. What is truth? It's not what you think it is. It's not what the world says it is. Yeah, yeah. It's not just because what makes you comfortable when you say that's my own truth. That's not truth. 
You know, when Jesus came into the world and God birthed him into the world, it's like God split the atmosphere and brought forth Jesus. You know, and Jesus said, I am the truth, the way, and the life. I am the truth. You know, I am God in the flesh. Even the scriptures, the Psalms and the Old Testament say, God is truth. God is the Lord of truth. So when Jesus says, even in Hebrews, he said, just give me a body that I can put on and come to earth and reveal to humanity truth. The truth of who God is. That's why in John 14, 9, 9 through 11, I tell you I'm going to be in different places. He said, he, he who has seen me, that's what he told Philip, has seen the Father. So how can you say, the words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the work. You know, Jesus said, I only do what the Father has me to do. I can do a whole lot of things, but I'm just here in my Father's business to reveal to humanity God. You know, I am the embodiment of God, the creator. You know, when you all sing that song, he knows my name. God in flesh. Jesus said, who I am, I reveal God, the father, to the world. I'm true. And everything else is false. That's why he told us to be light, because everything else is dark. Okay, when you see, and then, you know, Jesus said, before I come back, you're going to hear about wars and rumors of wars, you know, and then Paul wrote, he said, the men will be lovers of themselves and and greedy and only trying to satisfy their flesh and their desires. He said, but in that day, speak truth, speak truth. That's what the world system let me tell you like this. I had a teacher one time that told me, I ain't mean to get fired up, y'all. But anyway, I had a teacher tell us one time, he said, you know, even when you look at TV, it's telling a vision. It's telling Satan's vision of what he wants you to believe. That's what it is. So when Jesus comes into the world, he tells you, I'm true. Uh If you want to know the Father, you have to know me. Uh That's why when he goes to Nicodemus, and and Nicodemus is his great teacher, he says, you can't even understand the kingdom until you receive me. You can't comprehend those things. That's why it's revolutionary. Now, you know, I, I've been in church, man. I, I don't want to talk too much because, you know, they all put this on live Facebook. And <laughs> <laughs> it might get back, you know, it might get back to Pastor Jackson. And uh, we are National Baptist Church, you know. <laughs> I, and I don't want to say too much. I'm trying to hold back. But then, you know, even Jesus said, it's the time has come to worship God yeah. in spirit and in truth. Mm-hmm. You know, worship, and when you think about that songs that you were singing today, I want you to worship me with your whole self, mm-hmm. in your life. Every aspect of your life uh-huh. is to be surrendered uh-huh. to God. To God. And you might say, well, I can't help myself. Well, when I, we were passing through this morning, Tony ever said, you can't help yourself. We're caught on the spirit at that moment. Uh-huh. So you can surrender yeah, yeah, to his yeah. will. Spirit and truth, truth. You can't worship God unless you know truth. Who is truth? Yeah. Jesus. Right. Right. Yeah. That's the only way you can access the Father is through Jesus. That's the only way you can approach him. That's the only way. And guess what? The pillar... The purpose of the whole church, that's, that's us uh-huh. individually, you know, and even corporately, is to proclaim truth. Uh-huh. You know, when Timothy wrote it like this, 
I mean, not Timothy, but Paul wrote Timothy like this. He said, but if I am delayed, I write to you that you may know how you ought to conduct yourselves in the house of God, which is the church of the living God. And then he says, the pillar and ground of truth. So in us yeah. has to be true. Yes, yes. In us has to be the conviction and the commitment yes. to the gospel of God. Yes. All right. That Jesus is true. Yes. Okay, that Jesus in his incarnation is true. And he went on to write like this. He says, and without controversy, the greatest a mystery of godliness. Listen to this, he said. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up uh -huh. to glory. That's the truth. We are supposed to be the pillar of that truth. Yeah. Everywhere we go, we are to carry it and exemplify it. Mm -hmm. And one thing, when I think about these 25 years of preaching truth, you know, that you not only had truth preached to you, because the core of the... The gospel of the kingdom is truth, is Jesus, and Jesus revealed, right? But one thing about it is when I think about uh, Melvin, Pastor Melvin, I think about First Lady Marie, one thing is not just preaching and teaching, it's demonstrating. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you go out into the secular world, you take jobs, and you take the influence of that truth yeah. wherever you go. Yeah. Yeah. That's what God calls us to do. What's to impact the world? I think in this era, it's the time like Jeremiah, like I said, when people are away from God and people are seeking their own, what they call, I call it fabricated truth. Yeah. Things that make them comfortable that they don't feel challenged by the spirit of God. Right. And you need preachers and pastors uh, to teach truth. Listen, with knowledge and with understanding and with, you know, with searching truth and delivering truth to you, not just preaching. You know, I've been in places, I'm going to hold back, I'm going to hold back, right? I've been in places where people be preaching so hard and people get all excited and people be running around the church. And they be going on and going, and I be sitting there, I be praying in the Holy Ghost, because I be like, what they doing? <laughs> but anyway, and then they go out, and what, they live any kind of way. You know what I'm saying? But God say, worship me in spirit and truth. That means every aspect of your life is surrendered to God. You tell me, I'm just going by your testimony. When I saw that theme, you said, They've been preaching, feeding you with truth for 25 years. If they've been feeding you with truth for 25 years, then you know what I'm talking to you about. And it should be resonant. It should, you should embrace it. You know, I just want to encourage you to embrace the truth. Embrace the gospel of the truth. Celebrate, I'm going to tell you, celebrate. Yes. The man and woman of God that God has placed us. Yes. You know, Ephesians says God calls pastors and teachers yes. to edify you and to equip you. And yes. Not to sit on the bench. Right. Not to just get happy. You know, when I was growing up, only women would get happy in the church. You know, they get happy and shout, right? But it's not just to get happy or to have chill bumps. It's for you to, to be that soldier for God in the world. For us, not just you, me too, to be the light in the world, shattering darkness by your lifestyle, shattering darkness by your mindset. You know, sometimes we just need to be delivered from the way we think. That's why the God says, be renewed by the spirit of your mind. Yeah. Some things you've got to just lay down. Because, you know, I guess I'm getting to the place where I, where I want to say, sometimes he say, even in this season, when people are proud and blasphemers, lovers of money, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, despisers of good. Think about some of the stuff. I mean, just turn on the news. 
You can just hear all the stuff, all the controversy, all the lawsuits that's going on. And what is it about? Trying to establish evil as true. Evil as good. But then he says, gives this, he says, having a form of godliness, yeah, yeah. but denying his power. Yeah. So we can be godly, we can look good, we can dress up good. Yeah. I don't see that here, but some places you go, you know, some first ladies don't dress like Marie, you know. Oh, I can't talk about it. Anyway, <laughs> praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah, because I'm on Facebook. But anyway, this preaching of truth, this preaching of truth, hallelujah, this preaching of truth has power. You know, it's because it says it grows a believer. It says it grows a believer. In Ephesians 4, it says that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and cared about with every wind of doctrine, but by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of this feeble plotting. He said, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. In other words, speaking truth, preaching truth to you. You know, I heard someone give when they were doing praise and worship about how they've grown from truth. Someone preaches to you 25 years truth. You grow in the spirit. Sometimes, even if you don't even want to, you, you're you going to grow. Because somebody preaching to you over your head, in your heart, you know what I'm saying? You, you're going to grow. What other power? It liberates and sets free. Sets men free. In John 8, he says, as he spoke these words, many believed in him. Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, if you abide, listen, if you abide in my word, because the word is truth, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I'm the word, so it's truth. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Uh -huh. So the truth comes to set you free yeah, yeah. from every bondage that you may have. You know, sometimes when I'm going through stuff, I'm going to tell you what I found myself doing. Sometimes people say, well, I'm just praying for a breakthrough. I'm just praying for a breakthrough. Lately, I've got to the place, I say, God, just break through to me. Because I be thinking all kinds of, I don't know about y'all, I be thinking all kinds of stuff, and sometimes the way you raise all kinds of mindsets, you think you got to be certain kind of way, you be struggling with stuff, and then you can't get there on your own. So I just say, God, I, I just need you to break through to me. I need you just to break through to me and speak to me. I guess y'all say, what? Why would he do that? We well, did it to Moses. He had to go to him on a burning bush. He on the side of the mountain, keeping sheep. And God said, I got a call on your life. He said, yeah, but I'm keeping sheep. So he had to appear to him in a burning bush. He had to break through to him, right? And then he said, he purifies the soul. 1 Peter 1.22 says, since you have purified your soul in obeying the truth through the spirit and sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently and with a pure heart. And then when Jesus is about to leave the earth in his, his, his prayer, John 17, 17, he says, truth sanctifies. Yeah. It sanctifies you. If you somebody preaching truth to you 25 years, the purpose is to sanctify you. Uh -huh. Now, you came to God just to come to Jesus just as you are, right? Uh -huh. And we all came kind of messed up and whacked. I mean, you might not want to miss you. Everybody look pretty good today. But... <laughs> We came kind of messed up, right? And we still kind of working on it. But Jesus, Jesus says, sanctify them by your truth. He said, your word is true. As you sent me into the world, I also sent, sent them into the world. And it's for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they may also may be sanctified by truth. What is sanctification? It's a process of becoming more like Jesus. Because at the end, what's the goal of it all? Is that you'll be transformed and conformed to his image. You know, and that's what this truth is all about. And why? Because you have a charge. We have a charge. Just as Jesus was true, he said, you know what? We got to complete the mission. How do we complete it? By the spirit of truth. He said, I've given you another helper. I've given you someone else that will come to speak to you. Yeah, yeah. He's, and he's from the Father. 
And you had to commission, finish the mission of Jesus. And he says it's like this. He says, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Because, you know, the world can't receive truth. They can't receive. They talking about I'm feeling something. You ain't feeling nothing but heat and cold. You not feeling the Holy Ghost. Because in order to get the Holy Spirit, you got to receive Jesus. Yes. And when Jesus left, he said, I'm giving you the spirit of truth, another helper to complete the work. You know, this whole thing is not about just getting the help. You know, it's just not. It's about us as believers, affecting and impacting a world. You know, when I go in Melbourne's office and I see all them plaques up there, I say, well, I guess he's doing the work of the Father. Because you got to be what? Out there. God didn't call everybody to come to church and stay in church, and that's all you do is church. He wants you to be in here to be equipped. He wants you to be surrendered to the spirit of truth so you can impact the world for Christ. You know, I, my son, you know, I look around the world sometimes and I see how wicked it is. I don't know about y'all. Maybe some of the older people can relate, you know. And I say, Lord, I say, and he heard me saying, come, Lord Jesus. I mean, this has gotten ridiculous. Just come, Lord Jesus. And he said to me, he worked for Youth for Christ. He said, no, I don't want him to come yet. I got too many young people to say. I got, it's too much work to be done. So, you know, we've come to that place. Well, I just want to celebrate Marie and celebrate Melvin for their sacrifice, for their, for their work in ministry for 25 years. I want to encourage you and celebrate you, that you stay faithful to the work. And that you were willing to be changed. And you were willing to take this gospel of truth and go into the world. And I'm just going to close with this. And I, I'm just grateful to God for each one of you. I'm grateful for the message. And I know that in it, even through 25 years, that God is working something. God is doing, he has done a great work. When you can still be here preaching the truth, when you can still be here preaching the word with knowledge and understanding, and you still have people who are open to hearing, that's to be celebrated. And that's to be encouraged. You know that, hey, we're just not here just doing church. We're just making, completing the mission of Jesus. We're just becoming more like Christ Be because we recognize, and I want, I'm just going to close and just recognize that you are his workmanship and God has done a great work in this ministry and is doing a great work and he's faithful to complete it. And I just want to celebrate you two for great work. Celebrate you all for being faithful to truth. Amen. 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 Praise God.